Welcome back to 12 Days in March. In this section, we'll pick up our discussion of iron deficiency anemia and anemia of chronic disease, focusing on key diagnostic features. Recalling our discussion of iron homeostasis, let's move toward the diagnosis of iron deficiency anemia, starting with smear features and hemoglobin indices. So what do you need to know about the smear? Pictured here is a drawing of a normal red cell. It has a normal MCV and is referred to as normocytic. It has a zone of central pallor that is approximately one-third the size of the cell. Pictured next to it is a microcytic hypochromic cell. Microcytic implies a smaller cell with an MCV less than 80. Hypochromic refers to the increased zone of central pallor. This is a graphic you will need to be familiar with. There's a high likelihood you'll be seeing one of these on the NBME. Fortunately, however, on most questions about iron deficiency anemia, data is supplied that helps you figure out what you are viewing. Please note the poikilocyte while we're in the neighborhood. Poikilocytes refer to abnormally shaped red cells, whereas anisocytosis refers to cells of abnormal size. Pertinent to the smear and our differential diagnosis of microcytic anemia, the smear helps exclude other causes. Thalassemia patients also have a low MCV, but their smear will be replete with target cells. The patient with spherocytosis start with normal sized red blood cells when emerging from the bone marrow. After a few trips through the spleen where macrophages gobble up that delicious abnormal membrane, the cells start to shrink, but they are not hypochromic. And then that leads into our discussion of indices. The one to pay attention to for this discussion is MCHC. The MCHC is a measure of hemoglobin concentration. In diseases of hemoglobin, such as iron deficiency anemia and thalassemia, the MCHC is decreased. That makes sense. Hemoglobin production is impaired. Compare and contrast that with spherocytosis. In spherocytosis, there is nothing wrong with the hemoglobin. This is a disease of the membrane. So even though these cells become microcytic, the MCHC actually increases. So in iron deficiency anemia, MCHC is decreased. As for the boards, spherocytosis, probably the only condition you'll be questions about that has an increase in MCHC. This will be further addressed in a later section of 12 days in March. As for the diagnostic studies, the following information is the most important section for you to focus on. So go stretch your legs or grab a delicious piece of chocolate and let's forge ahead. Let's start with a summary of the specific findings necessary to the diagnosis of iron deficiency anemia. These include a low serum iron level. It is iron deficiency anemia, so a low iron makes sense. You have a high total iron binding capacity. Iron binding capacity is probably the most confusing but important of the diagnostic tests. I like to describe it as a functional assessment of transferrin. It doesn't tell us if the transferrin level is high or low, but rather it describes transferrin's ability to transport iron. We'll cover this in more detail shortly. Iron deficiency anemia also has a low saturation. The iron or transferrin saturation is simply a ratio of iron to TIBC. In patients with iron deficiency anemia, a low ferritin is noted. Recall that ferritin is the best reflection of total iron body stores, so in iron deficiency anemia, it should be low. Finally, I include a note on the bone marrow in patients with iron deficiency anemia. The iron stores are depleted. This information will occasionally be provided in a clinical vignette, but principally appears in discussions of the anemia of chronic disease, so we'll review it in further detail in that section. All right, so iron binding capacity is an indirect measure of transferrin. It is measured by adding a fixed amount of iron to plasma and measuring the amount of iron that didn't become bound. In so doing, one can assess the binding capacity. Under normal circumstances, approximately one-third of the available sites on transferrin are bound by iron. It is important for you to appreciate that transferrin is literally a trolley that transports iron. You need to recognize that a high total iron binding capacity means there are plenty of seats available on the trolley. A low iron binding capacity means those seats are saturated with passengers. Think about getting on the green line after a night at Fenway Park. The capacity is low. There are too many passengers. So here we have the normal saturation compared with iron deficiency anemia. Note, less iron and therefore more capacity to bind iron in elevated TIBC. What makes this even easier, in iron deficiency anemia, the body increases transferrin synthesis, so not only is it empty, 
there is more of it. The bottom line, in iron deficiency anemia, you have an increased iron binding capacity. Compare and contrast that with iron overload. Lots of iron, and it is bound by transferrin. The transferrin is binding all that excess iron, so the IBC is decrease. Sorry, we're full. There's no more capacity on the transferrin trolley. Iron saturation, also called transferrin saturation, is simply the ratio of iron to TIBC. In iron deficiency anemia, as shown in our patient, the iron to TIBC ratio is 4%. It is simply iron of 18 divided by iron binding capacity of 511. That equals 4%. That is pretty darn low. You can see the lab lists the saturation in the 20 to 50% range. Iron deficiency anemia is diagnosed with a value of less than 10%. Anemia of chronic disease, as we'll discuss, is generally below normal, but not by much. The serum ferritin is also ordered, and a low value confirms the diagnosis of iron deficiency anemia. Again, just by way of comparison, here is iron overload. A high iron level is noted, a low binding capacity because the trolley is full. Iron divided by TIBC gives a high saturation, greater than 50%. This is one of the tests used to screen for hemochromatosis. And those are the diagnostic studies. Be familiar with these values. It is their very favorite way to come after you when discussing iron disorders of all sorts. We'll finish up iron deficiency anemia with a brief discussion of how they will present the diagnostic etiologies. In terms of etiologies, blood loss from any cause will cause iron deficiency anemia, including pulmonary bleeding, GU bleeding, blood donation, any cause. Whereas acute blood loss will lead to iron deficiency anemia, that isn't the typical scenario. Chronic GI blood loss is the typical vignette. It is their favorite. Losing a little bit of iron over an extended time course sets the stage for mystery. So chronic GI blood loss is big money. They'll present indices of iron deficiency anemia. You'll be proud to figure it out. Then they ask the most likely underlying etiology, and they'll use language such as chronic GI blood loss, which is pretty straightforward, or colon cancer, and specifically right-sided. The cancer will be right-sided as left-sided causes obstructive symptoms. The right side allows chronic, undetected blood loss plus some weight loss. Anemia and weight loss, they love that. You'll need to note the anemia is iron deficiency to know that they are talking about colon cancer. And by the way, they can do this in the reverse. Patient with right-sided colon cancer is most likely to present with which of the following? Iron deficiency will be one of the choices. These questions should be a gift. Menstrual blood loss is another common etiology and the presentation will be the same. They'll present indices of iron deficiency. You'll figure it out again. Then they're going to ask the most likely underlying etiology. They'll present something occult, such as uterine fibroid. In working with students, this is always a fun question. They'll list an obvious GYN bleeding source, but students become so paranoid after doing hundreds of QBank questions. The options on a question like this will include myeloid proliferative diseases, and they'll look so tempting. They may say the patient has SLE or rheumatoid arthritis, so you'll think anemia of chronic disease. But it is a straightforward question. Iron deficiency anemia due to GYN bleeding. But nobody ever picks fibroids. They think the NBME is trying to trick them, so they all pick leukemia or SLE, even after they figured out the patient had iron deficiency anemia. Students love to trick themselves. Other common causes include nutritional deficiency and malabsorption syndromes. Nutritional is most common worldwide, so of course they never ask about it. Insofar as malabsorption, in a classic vignette, they'll describe a patient with diarrhea and low iron. You'll need to put the two together to conclude the presence of celiac disease. Treatment is really straightforward. You correct the underlying etiology and give iron. Reticulocytosis will be robust by 10 days, but it takes a long time to replete the bone marrow. Under special notes, I again advise you to be familiar with how anemia affects the oxygen content and the cardiovascular response to anemia, both of which are covered in the introductory sections. Also note that reactive thrombocytosis is seen commonly in iron deficiency anemia. So low iron and high platelets doesn't mean myeloproliferative disease, it means iron deficiency anemia. So that's iron deficiency anemia. As with other sections, there are only a finite number of ways they can come after you. So let's forge ahead and uh, finish up with anemia of chronic disease. 
This is the one they like to trip you up with when compared with iron deficiency anemia. This banner is probably the most important thing to remember. Some call it anemia of chronic disease, but calling it anemia of chronic inflammatory disease is so much more useful. If you get the notion of inflammatory cytokines mediating this anemia, everything will make perfect sense. So the lab manifestation and lab findings are all related to cytokine release. IL-6 causes a rise in hepcidin. What does that do? Hepcidin degrades ferroport and so iron is trapped in the cell, including the enterocyte and the bone marrow macrophage. It is not available to the erythroblast. Bingo! You have anemia. The transferrin level decreases. It is a negative acute phase reactant. It goes down in inflammation. That explains the important laboratory findings. So here is the data that we'll cover twice. These patients generally have mild anemia. The MCV is reduced, but only mildly, and there is no reticulocytosis. The low transferrin means low total iron binding capacity. There are less trolleys running. Iron saturation is lowish or normal. We'll review this in the next slide, but remember, iron is trapped inside the cells. So we have low iron, but we also have reduced trolleys. Ferritin, which is low in iron deficiency anemia, is normal or elevated in this inflammatory disorder. Ferritin is an acute phase reactant. And finally, the bone marrow shows normal iron stores. That is, hemosiderin is trapped in the bone marrow macrophages and stained positively. These findings are the money in anemia of chronic disease. Look at this slide. It's a pictorial representation of what we just discussed. This is crazy. But you have a low iron because the iron is trapped in the cells due to the high hepcidin. You have a low transferrin because transferrin is a negative acute phase reactant. So the TIBC is low. Iron saturation is in the low normal range. Both iron and transferrin are proportionally low. Ferritin is normal or elevated. There is no shortage of iron, it just isn't being circulated. The bone marrow stains positive for the same reason. Iron is trapped. Iron deficiency anemia would not stain positively. Please note, if they tell you the bone marrow stains positively with Prussian blue stain, the answer is not iron deficiency anemia. Here it is again, but this time compared with iron deficiency anemia. In iron deficiency anemia, the iron binding capacity is high. In anemia chronic disease, the iron binding capacity is low. In iron deficiency anemia, the iron saturation is low. In anemia of chronic disease, it is in the low normal range. Here are the ferritin values. Ferritin is low in iron deficiency anemia, normal or elevated in anemia chronic disease, and finally the bone marrow description. Iron deficiency anemia, decreased iron stores. Anemia of chronic disease, normal iron stores. And here is the classic question. They'll come after you with an old, tired, weak patient with inflammatory symptoms such as hand and wrist pain or swelling. She will be anemic. The MCV will be 75. The serum iron will be low. They will give you TIBC and or iron saturation. You will need to choose the underlying cause of her anemia. Is it rheumatoid arthritis or chronic GI blood loss or a GI neoplasm? And there's the summary again. They'll both have low iron, but the iron binding capacity will distinguish the two, as will ferritin and the iron saturation. Finally, for you erythropoietin lovers, why hasn't erythropoietin fixed this problem? Answer, inflammatory cytokines also shut down EPO production. One would expect an elevated EPO production in anemia of chronic disease, but that is not what is seen. And that will do it. It's been a long journey through anemia, iron metabolism, and iron deficiency anemia, as well as anemia of chronic disease. But this is another important topic that is well worth your investment of time. If you have any questions or concerns, please email me at 12 days in March. Thank you.